If you're hurt, injured, don't waste time. Gary Johnson cries for every dime. Welcome to Simply the Law, a program created by attorney Gary C. Johnson. Simply the Law provides free legal advice and encourages happiness and quality of life. Now, here's Simply the Law with Gary C. Johnson. Hello, everyone. Welcome in to Simply the Law. I'm Keith Casebolt, always on time and ready to go <laughs> with my good friend, Gary C. Johnson. It's wonderful to be alive, isn't it, folks? How you guys and gals doing, huh? Now, we're going to talk about the law today. Nope. Because I've been reading again, and I found something that I absolutely have to share with you folks because it was a revelation to me. Remember how many times I've told you that unsolicited advice is camouflaged criticism? Well, what is criticism? Hmm? Mm. I found a book that talks about it. And I thought it was so interesting that I'm going to share it with you. But before I get into that, I'm going to read. Remember how many times I've told you that being happy and feeling good and understanding your self-worth and having a good spirit about yourself, that that's really the only thing that's important. And one time I even said on the program, I said, when you look at all of these self-help books out there and all of these things, that if you go to Proverbs, you'll find the same thing said maybe in a different way. So I'm going to read you a couple little quotes from Proverbs in this book, Biblical Quotations. And I find it very interesting. I actually believe I've got them marked here so I can share them with you. Got it? Okay. Here we go. A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Proverbs 17, 22. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing because we did a program one time, Gary, where you actually had medical science backing up the fact that you can die from a broken heart. It you, can actually kill you. And stress. But if you have a merry heart, which we talk about having, my friends, which all of you should have, I hope, then it's like medicine. Now, Proverbs. So think about that. We're talking about the rising cost of health care. You just read from Pro Proverbs. You want to improve your health? Have a merry heart. Practice being happy. Get rid of the negative. Maybe not watch so much news, huh? <laughs> Okay, there's another one I want to read you on from Proverbs about the same thing. The spirit of a man will endure sickness, but who can bear a wounded spirit? Mm -hmm. So you have said time and time again, when we've actually talked about cases that you've handled, you have said, Keith, bones can heal. Broken bones can heal, lacerations can heal, but when somebody has lost all hope and their spirit is broken, the pain for that is so much greater. What I found as practicing law over the years is that one of the most severe injuries that my clients can receive is post-traumatic stress disorder. They can have broken bones and all those things. Those heal. But that post-traumatic stress disorder, broken spirit, proverbs, it's a fact, bad. But I just wanted to pass that on to you <clears throat> about a couple of things I, in Proverbs before we start talking about criticism. But before we start talking about criticism, I want to go to the computer. There's our number in case any of you need to reach us. We have a very nice Lexington office, and uh, we serve a lot of clients there anymore. KCJohnson.com, you can reach us there. In general, please, please, please check your insurance policy 
and make sure that you have under UNDER insurance that protects you and your family. And now we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and we're going to go talk about criticism. You're going to find, I think, what Gary's going to share with you absolutely amazing. So stay with us because Gary C. Johnson and Simply the Law will be right back right after this. People are asking, what is judo law? Judo is a martial art that uses the opponent's strength to defeat them by not opposing it directly. Gary C. Johnson created a method of practicing law based upon that principle. It worked so well, he named it judo law. To see the results, go to GaryCJohnson.com. To have Gary and his team of judo lawyers go to work for you, dial pound hurt. This is an advertisement. Welcome back into Simply the Law. We're going to get to the subject of criticism, but before you do, uh, you had mentioned the Lexington office, and Gary, it made me think I had to make a trip to Lexington the other day. Hadn't been in a long time. I uh, went through all the construction, which, you know, the lanes are changing, and I, you're not used to the road. But then when I got to that detour on the Mountain Parkway, oh boy. That was a different experience with big trucks on the road and, and the curves and everything with the people going to UK games, back to school, doctor's appointments, traveling back and forth. We really need to warn them about that mountain parkway. It's dangerous. Very dangerous. In fact, we have some cases on it right now where people ran, got injured because of trucks hitting them coming across the line. So be careful. One other thing I want to cover before I get into criticism. You're going to be voting, and some of you probably already have your absentee ballots. <clears throat> There's a constitutional amendment on there that increases the term of the district court judges and the circuit court clerks. Please vote yes on that constitutional amendment. We need that. We don't need those judges having to be in an election every four years or the clerk every six. So the constitutional amendment that would increase the terms of their offices from four or six to eight years, please vote yes on that because it's the right thing to do. Nothing in it for me, but it's the right thing to do. Vote yes on the constitutional amendment. Now let's talk about criticism. And as usual, my books. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this Dale Carnegie this book. This Dale Carnegie Lifetime Plan for Success. <clears throat> and this is what Odell has to say. And remember, <clears throat> this man's been dead for many, many, many years. And he starts off this chapter with, Remember, <clears throat> no one ever kicks a dead dog. What's he mean by that? Well, I'm going to start re read to you. An event occurred in 1929 that created a national sensation in educational circles. Learned men from all over America rushed to Chicago to witness the affair. A few years earlier, a young man by the name of Robert Hutchins had worked his way through Yale, acting as a waiter, a lumberjack, a tutor, and a clothesline salesman. Now, only eight years later, he was being inaugurated as president of the fourth richest university in America, the University of Chicago, his age 30. Incredible. The older educators shook their heads. Criticism came roaring down upon this boy wonder like a rock slide. He was this and he was that, too young, inexperienced. His educational ideas were cockeyed and modern. Even the newspapers joined in the attack. The day he was inaugurated, a friend said to the father of Robert Maynard Hutchison, I was shocked this morning to read that the newspaper editorial denouncing your son. Yes, the elder Hutchison replied, it was severe, but remember that no one ever kicks a dead dog. Yes, and the more important the dog is, the more satisfaction people will get it in kicking him. The Prince of Wales, who later became King Edward VIII, had that brought home to him in the seat of his pants. He was attending Dartmouth College in Devonshire at the time, a college that corresponds to our Naval Academy at Annapolis. 
the prince was about 14. One day, one of the naval officers found him crying and asked him what was wrong. He refused to tell at first, but finally admitted the truth. He was being kicked by the naval cadets. The commodore of the college summons the boys and explained to them that the prince had not complained, but he wanted to find out why the prince had been singled out for this rough treatment. After much hemming and hawing and toe scraping, the cadets finally confessed that when they themselves became commanders and captains in the king's navy, they wanted to be able to say that they had kicked the king. Now, isn't that interesting? <laughs> you know, in those two chapters, because you started off with the title, Nobody Kicks a Sleeping Dog or a Dead Dog, and everybody's like, okay, what does that mean? Here's this young boy wonder who worked hard, got himself through Yale, did manual labor, did everything to rise to the highest position, and you would think people would embrace him and say, what a wonderful success story, but instead they, they started him. criticizing. Yeah. Well, Amazing. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. I got to say, I really loved how the father of the young man took things. He said, remember, no one kicks a dead dog. Stay with us. We'll be back to talk more about criticism right after this. Eastern Kentucky, Southern West Virginia, and Southwest Virginia. It can be a tough territory to reach when it comes to marketing. We can help. We can also help you find your identification. And we have plenty of services to do it and a lot of experience behind us over 37 years. In fact, we've either booked or sold nearly $70 million in advertising in this region. You need a new voice, a new idea, a new concept? Caseable Marketing, we're ready to go to work for you today. Our motto is nothing happens until you make it happen. So let's get started today. Welcome back into Simply the Law. Okay, so the first story we find out the young boy wonder is criticized, but Obviously, he had a very smart father because the father knew they were only criticizing him because he was a boy wonder. He was achieving things that these learned people had never achieved. Therefore, they were criticizing him for it. And then, then in the second chapter, I've, it was kind of humorous because I can see the, the commander talking to the cadets and finally one of them just saying, hey, someday I want to be able to brag and say, I kicked the king's rear end. <laughs> But that's what it was all about because of how important the prince was. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read some more about criticism. Because I love this little story about this when I was reading this book. So when you're kicked and criticized, remember that it is often done because it gives the kicker a feeling of importance. It often means that you are accomplishing something and are worthy of attention. Many people get a sense of savage satisfaction out of demeaning those who are better educated than they are or are more successful. For example, while I was writing this chapter, I received a letter from a woman denouncing General William Booth, founder of the Salvation Army. I had given a laudatory broadcast about General Books, so this woman wrote me, saying that General Booth had stolen $8 million of the money he had collected to help poor people. The charge, of course, was absurd. But this woman wasn't looking for truth. She was seeking the mean-spirited gratification that she got from tearing down someone far above her. I threw her bitter letter into the wastebasket and thanked the Almighty God that I wasn't married to her. <laughs> her letter didn't tell me anything at all about General Booth, but it did tell me a lot about her. Vulgar people take huge delight in the faults and follies of great men. One hardly thinks of the president of Yale as a vulgar man. Yet a former president of Yale, Timothy Dwight, apparently took huge delight in denouncing a man who was running for president of the United States. The president of Yale warned that if this man was ele were elected president, we may see our wives and daughters the victims of legal prostitution, soberly dishonored, speciously polluted, an outcast of delicacy and virtue, the loathing of God and men. 
Sounds almost like the denunciation of Hitler, doesn't it? But it wasn't. It was a denunciation of Thomas Jefferson. Which Thomas Jefferson? Surely not the immortal Thomas Jefferson, the author of the Declaration of Independence, the patriot saint of democracy. Yes, verily, that was the same man. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, isn't it? I'm going to read you a little more because I love this. I hope you don't mind. You didn't come to watch a TV program to hear somebody read from a book, did you? But it's okay. <laughs> this stuff is interesting to me. I hope it's interesting to you. What American do you suppose was denounced as a hypocrite, an imposter, and as little better than a murderer? A newspaper cartoon depicted him on a guillotine, a big knife ready to cut off his head. Crowds jeered at him and hissed at him as he rode through the streets. Who was it? George Washington. But that occurred a long time ago. Maybe human nature has improved since then. Let's see. Let's take the case of Admiral Perry, the explorer who startled and thrilled the world by reaching the North Pole with dog sleds on April 2, 1909, a goal that brave men for centuries had suffered and starved and tried to, died in, to attain. Perry himself almost died from cold and starvation, and eight of his toes were frozen so hard that they had to be cut off. He was so overwhelmed with disasters that he feared he would go insane. His superior naval officers in Washington were burned up because Perry was getting so much publicity and acclaim. So they accused him of collecting money for scientific expeditions and then lying around and loafing in the Arctic. <laughs> and they probably believed it because it is almost impossible not to believe what you want to believe. Their determination to humiliate and block Perry was so violent that only a direct order from President McKinley enabled Perry to continue his career in the Arctic. And at the end, it says this, if you're tempted to be worried about unjust criticism, here is the rule to live by. Remember that unjust criticism is often no more than a disguised compliment. Remember that no one ever kicks a dead dog. Gary, that is amazing. You just, you just gave us four great individuals in our history and all four of these individuals were criticized to the point that, I mean, called the murderers, uh, thieves, mm -hmm. everything. And I guess the lesson is anyone that's ever stepped out and tried to achieve anything or do anything is going to get criticism. But what you're telling us from this book with Dale Carnegie is it's actually a compliment. Okay. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. I know it's hard to see criticism as a compliment, but I think when you see these stories, that's what it turns into. Stay with us. We'll be back with Simply the Law and Gary C. Johnson right after this. Who really knows which lawyer you should choose? Other lawyers know. They've invited Gary C. Johnson to teach his method of judo law in Denver, Atlanta, New Orleans, and across the nation. Gary used judo law to set the record for the largest personal injury verdict in the history of Kentucky. Now, which lawyer should you choose? The choice is clear. Gary C. Johnson, dial pound hurt. This is an advertisement. Welcome back into Simply the Law. Let's go back to the letter that was written by the lady to Dale Carnegie. You know, the first thing that amazed me when you read that is Dale didn't take that letter and say, oh my goodness, the head of the Salvation Army just stole all this money. He knew it was ludicrous. But what I liked what he said about that in the chapter was, it told me nothing about the guy that was the head of the Salvation Army, but it told me everything about the woman that wrote the letter. So he's pointing out, Gary, when we stoop to criticize people, we're not doing any damage to them, we're doing damage to ourselves. How many times have you heard me say this over the years? When you criticize, all you do is demean yourself in the eyes of the person that's listening to your criticism. You may not believe it, but I promise you that every single time you decide to criticize another human being, the person that's hearing your criticism will think less of you, not more. 
and your instinct is that they will think more of me <clears throat> because I'm tearing this other person down. Doesn't work that way. It's like poor old <laughs> Dale Carnegie there said, I looked up and said, thank you, Lord, I'm not married to this mean-spirited woman. <laughs> it wasn't. <clears throat> I mean, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was the funny part that he said, thank you, good Lord, I'm not married to her. But that was another thing that he pointed out about mean-spirited. People that are criticizing and tearing people down are looked upon as mean-spirited people. Well, misery loves company, right? All of you have heard that, and it is so true. It, and why, how many times have I said to you, my friends, if you've got a person that's miserable, that you're hanging out with, or you're dealing with, or whatever, get away from them. It's contagious. If you've not already caught it, get away from them. <laughs> I'm serious. And if you have caught it, go to therapy. Do whatever you have to do, but get rid of that misery. You're not designed and meant to be miserable in this life. I don't care what anyone says. It's not the way it was meant to be. No. Happiness is a choice that you make, and it's the choices you make. <clears throat> and next week, <clears throat> I'm going to do a program on your, the value that we have so that you can understand if you watch the program next week, the value that people have. How many times have I said that each and every one of you is important? No mm -hmm. question about it. Each and every one of you has a value. No question about it. The people that give up and forfeit their value are the people that come, the small people that do nothing but criticize, condemn, and complain. Get away from those people. For your own sense of well-being, get away from them. Gary, you've talked about the <clears throat> craving to be important. So when it comes to this criticism, and like the lady who was trying to tear, tear down the admiral and everybody else, are they doing this because they want to feel better about themselves, that they're trying to build themselves up by tearing somebody down? It's almost like a mental illness. But some people believe or feel inside of them that if they can criticize and point out the flaws and the failures or the mistakes that someone else has made, then that makes them important. And it's almost insane. You see it in political campaigns all the time. Mm -hmm. People don't go try to find the good things that someone they're running against has done. They go try to find some, something, anything that's mean and nasty. And then they publicize it, and somehow that makes them be the better person. But in reality, it makes them the worst person. Because it never works. Criticism doesn't work. Criticism, and if you've got in your personal lives right now, <clears throat> someone that's criticized you, and you know about the criticism. Don't let it bother you. Say, oh, goody, they've complimented me. <laughs> they've, they are jealous of me. They are jealous of my success. They're jealous of my looks. They're, whatever it was they criticized you about, flip it, judo it. In the reality, it's a compliment. They wouldn't have gone to the trouble to criticize you if it hadn't been bothering them that you were being able to do those things, right? Let's use the one example of George Washington, father of our country, our first president. What if when he heard all of this criticism, even being called a murderer and, and all the things that was said, if George had thrown up his hands and said, okay, I've had enough of this. I'm not going to lead the revolution. Who cares if we have the country? He, if he could have stepped away because of all the criticism, it would have changed history. But he knew better. He knew it was unjust criticism. He ignored it, obviously. 
and went on and accomplished the great things that we needed him to accomplish so that we could have our country and our democracy. But Gary, it's that simple. is that the sad thing that we may have many friends that are watching this program right now that due to some unjust criticism by individuals, they stop pursuing their dream, they stop trying to achieve certain things in their lives because somebody told them they weren't worthy or they couldn't do it or they weren't qualified or they'll never be that? How many of you would never get into politics because of the potential criticism? Well, I can raise a hand Those there. of you that could actually do good, I, could actually make some difference. Honest to goodness. But you, you hesitate and you don't do it because you know the criticism's going to happen. Things you may have done years ago that are meaningless now, that's the past, don't mean anything. But we hesitate because <clears throat> of criticism. And I guess the purpose of this show <clears throat> is, my friends, when you're criticized, it is a compliment. Take it as a compliment. Because that person is jealous and envious of you. But, it, but that's so hard to do. You've told us words are only words and don't let them hurt you. But as human beings, when we hear this criticism, we want to react. We get our feelings hurt. It slows us down, it stops us. I know what you're saying, that we should rejoice. It's kind of like there would have been no David had there not been a Goliath. So the bigger the criticism and the worse the criticism, you must be doing something right. Obviously, you're doing something that the other person is jealous of. <laughs> <laughs> You've caught their attention. No question about that or they wouldn't be taking the time to criticize you, right? So just remember, again, it's the whole purpose of this show, because I think, remember we're all talking in terms of being happy. If you understand things like how criticism really can't hurt you, it enhances your ability to go ahead and be happy. And being happy feels good. Ooh, yes. <clears throat> being miserable. No, 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 no. Being miserable does not feel good. And how many times, and I'll say it again a thousand times on this program, happiness is a choice. You can make the choice to be happy. And it may take you a year or two to get rid of the things in your life that's making you unhappy. Do it. Take the time. The yeah. effort is worth it. You know what, my friend, I think this week one of our friends is going to get criticized by somebody and they're going to look at them and smile and go, well, at least I know I'm not a dead dog because <laughs> nobody kicks a dead, dead dog. dog. <laughs> <clears throat> I hope you've enjoyed the program. I mean, really, what Gary just read to us about these great individuals, criticism is actually disguised as a compliment because you are doing something. It was a great program. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for tuning in. On behalf of Gary C. Johnson, I'm Keith Casebold. As always, we look forward to seeing you again next week right here at this very same time. Thank you for watching Simply the Law, a program created by Gary C. Johnson. Until next week, may you be safe, blessed, and happy.